It's good. Let's do it. Um, are you a student? I am. Where do you go? So I'm a master's student at the Air Force Institute of Technology, uh, which is the, I mean, it's mainly active duty Air Force, uh, mainly officers are the students that go through AFIT. However, uh, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base is the size of a small ear town at the very least, and there's a very large civilian and contractor population there, and so um, AFIT is open uh, as long as you have some kind of uh, sponsorship. Air Force, Inst did you say Air Force Institute of Technology? I did, yeah. Okay. Oh, what state and, is that? Uh, that's in Ohio. Ohio. Yeah. Okay. Um, so are you like, uh, let's see, is that, are you like an uh, Air Force or anything like that? Or? Nah, you, you can you can tell just by the, uh, by the hair length, length, here, so. length of your hair. <laughs> yep. Okay. Yeah. So Air Force Institute of Technology, that's not like a, is it for a lot of military people or it's just got mainly? Name? Yeah. Ma uh, mainly, I'd say about 90% of the folks that go through there are active duty military um, and typically officers, although uh, there are some more senior enlisted personnel that that wind up getting stationed to pursue a, a graduate degree at AFIT. Okay. Or a certificate or whatever else the Air Force or respective branch of service feels they need. Yeah. Uh, and as far as your your studies, are you studying, like, like say, that some of this process management stuff? Or what are you studying? Yeah. So uh, I'm pursuing a master's in systems engineering. Um, it's going, uh, it's going to be going in the direction of model-based systems engineering for, for the thesis. Um, what's you know, ba basically... What's model-based systems engineering? Uh, I'm sorry, what? What is model-based model systems engineering? Um, so, it's kind of the the new evolution, or, I don't know, maybe, maybe revolution of systems engineering where you know previously you'd have your document based where it's you know you're you're defining your system uh, let's say you're starting at the design uh, phase of your of a system and so you define you know what you need your system to do in terms of like certain requirements or or other uh, performance specifications and etc and then um, you let these requirements kind of set up the uh, constraints that will ultimately guide any future designs that are happening. So, mm -hmm. so that way, you know, if you pick a simple example, you you come in to something saying, okay, I know I need a pump that can have a flow rate of, um, you know, sixty cubic feet per minute of a uh, you know non-viscous liquid or, or or something like that, and that could be a uh, device. A design requirement and then you will work off of that to maybe figure out well what are what are the options that are available to me that can meet those requirements or you might you know put other other things in there and then yeah a big a big part of that is in the like process management and um, yeah I, I think I think a lot of that really goes into managing complexity and model based so model based is you were describing what was before or did you get to what model based is yeah yeah and so so uh, that that would be kind of like how things go with document based where you have some static document and so if you decide you need to change that requirement or anything like that then uh, you may have repercussions all the way through your your system that, that need now to be manually changed. And so with model-based systems engineering, um, there are some, there's one proprietary software called Cameo that I'm, that I'm been using. And so with that, um, you, as, as you're building out your model, uh, if you 
change one block in, in one location, you know, you can have the inheritance properties and, and these sorts of things. So that way, if you change your requirement or you change your parameter or something like that, that will propagate on down through the rest of, of your system's diagram. Um, yeah. Is uh, anything of that nature available in open source or no tools op that are open? So I had, uh, I had, I had done a Google a little while ago for a open source cameo because there's, there's some websites out there that have mm -hmm. pretty good, um, pretty good, uh, like you search for a proprietary program and then they'll tell you what options are available in the open source community. I did, I did see some stuff, but I didn't uh, download them and start to play with them as, I mean, since, since the, the masters is, is plenty to keep busy. I didn't want to say, oh, let me, let me just go ahead and start, start playing with this. I yeah. thought I did see something though. Let me. Go ahead and try to do that. No, actually. Yeah. Searching for open source system modeling software. Uh -huh. So, let's see here. Um, I've got a website here that's open source MBSE, which would be Model Based Systems Engineering Tool Reviews, so. Send a link in the chat box. Would this be relevant? Um, okay, so with respect to what we want to talk about today, with respect to the extreme enterprise challenge which we're creating, um, with respect to breakdown of a large number of complex tasks for product development, do you see some of these tools being relevant or not really? Should we just get into, hey, let's talk about breakdown of tasks? So, how do we approach um, it? You know, I, I would I would say not necessarily. Well, y yes and no. Uh, I think where a tool like model based system en engineering would really shine would be uh, as as we're doing more of these, as we're building out uh, mm -hmm. product ecologies from from these uh, extreme enterprise productization events. I think where it would fit in is actually tracking where all of these links are. And so um, having having something where you could automatically update like an instantiation of a type, it's kind of like an object oriented programming, where you're saying uh, object of type cat, or, you know, object of type animal. And, and so that way you can go and add a new instantiation of that and then put in its parameters. And so that way um, you're, you're able to better track or, you know, it's like, I think, I think some of the, the most important things to pay attention to for the extreme enterprise event is going to be at, um, how each module will actually interface with other elements yeah. of the global village construction set. Um, and, and so, you know, being able to have a, a uh, active program that will tell you what those interfaces are or tell you, you know, which, which parts of the global village construction set a module can uh, be a subsystem of. I, I, think, I think those kinds of tools would be really critical in that area, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So for now, where do we go for, for now? Uh, Let's see. Do you have? Did you? Um, do you have anything you wanted to show me in terms of the, like a wiki page, or did you write down anything relevant to today's meeting? Or so, uh, I've been I've been building out the extreme enterprise uh, pre preparation phases. I think um, I think I've got a pretty good set of of thoughts down 
on that page, so I, I could, I mean, I could share screen. Yeah. Or yeah, let's do okay. that. Share screen. Cool. Uh, is that right on Extreme Enterprise page? Yes. Uh, oh, Extreme Enterprise Event Design. Oh, Event Design. Okay. Right. So. So it seems like it kind of makes. Uh, make this concept makes sense to you uh, it sounds like from the scrum perspective or, or agile perspective like this this makes sense large large scale breakdown interface designs and so forth which was good because some people might think it's crazy yeah uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I definitely think that I, I definitely think that in order in order to find success with it, the those those kinds of processes are, are going to be the really critical um, elements in the in the planning and execution. And yeah. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm by the way, how long ago did you find out find out about open source ecology in our work? Um, right around 2016. Hmm. Around the CD go home time, or? Yep. Is that how yep. you found out about it? Through CD go well, home. Well, I, I I ended up coming across um, open source ecology because of a like. Uh, I was, I was kind of exploring around in in politics and trying to develop a you know a worldview of you know how I think things ought to be and you know kind of figure out like okay well what do I value and all this sort of stuff. Um, one of the things that I looked at was a podcast on post scarcity uh, economies and open source ecology had come up there and so. As I was digging through some of the things that it had mentioned, uh, open source ecology was basically the only nonfiction <laughs> on there. Yeah. Hey, uh, as far as the post scarcity podcast, was there uh, is there a name for that podcast or? Um, I bet I could find it again on YouTube. Post scarcity um, podcast. Yeah, is that more like the transhumanist route, or which which avenue? Because a lot of different people talk about a lot of different segments of the population talk about post scarcity. Um, oh, that's even a term on Wikipedia. Um, there's a long section of fiction on Wikipedia, but. <laughs> should have ourselves to the nonfiction part of that. Yep. Uh, yeah. I mean. Yeah, I see. I see the kind of. Uh, from the techno utopians to the post scarcity anarchists. Um, whoa, there's an economics economics of abundance. What's this? Jack Schoen? Yeah. Okay. Um, interesting. Um, well, this is about the extreme enterprise is the core of economics of abundance. Okay. So maybe get into. So go ahead with what you're thinking about preparation. So um, right now, where I'm at, I've been trying to uh, map out. Uh, what should probably go into preparing for an event. I mean, obviously, figuring out what we want to uh, build in, in the Extreme Enterprise event would be the first step. I think the second let's, yeah, step that's in well, there, Let's start with the assumption of the house, because that's, that's got a... If we're solving yeah. for the problem of people showing up, that's definitely people are going to show up for that, where initially it was like something along the lines of a home on a trailer, but I'm thinking it's like let's talk about house, like a small a micro house that however it's deployed, not getting into details even. I think the clarity on uh, 
value proposition, we got to definitely prepare that to, to prepare a really compelling package. Okay, say the, the kind of meme I have in my mind is 50k for a 50k for a thousand square foot house, micro house, basic model. Then you can go okay. up from there. 50k for a thousand square foot house. Would you like one? I would like one. <laughs> um, I, I think a lot of people would like one, and and yeah. then you know, well, let's I mean, start with that. that talking about you know sewage sewage treatment through through burning and you know possibly getting some pellets and and uh, some uh, solar and, and all that yeah. kind of stuff there. It's a, yeah. it's a good opportunity to combine a lot of technologies it's, it's kind of kind of like a catch-all for a whole bunch of technology which means we can sneak in a bunch of things and when we look for people uh, perhaps the outcome of this is that we really develop some subsystem that becomes a product on its own maybe even but I think the house is a great catch-all and definitely will get the attention with that yeah let's do it and, and so um, so figuring that all right so with the with, with the house as as the example yeah. um, basically I think the first thing that we want to do with that decided would be pulling together uh, some subject matter experts that yeah. we know are, are going to be able to look at uh, the micro house and put it on a conceptual level to the point where they're, they're going to be able to uh, break a micro house down into a set of modules. And so um, yep. one, of, one of the things that I, I suggest Absolutely. is that you know, we we do like an event or something like that, where you know either we just give the task and everybody kind of breaks off, and then we get together at some later date, or um, we get together and in one session try to hammer it all out. But the thing to start with would probably be a definition of done, where we say, okay, you know, where do we want to get to with our module or modular? break down, you know, what what are the requirements for us to call this done and, and be ready to put this in front of a group of two to a thousand uh, designers, engineers, uh, uh, collaborators. I'm thinking um, the way we go about that is as we go along, we, we have a rough skeleton of the modules because that's not too hard to compose. And then we ask for, so give them something to chew on and then ask for feedback on that or... Um, basically as we go with the pre-prep meaning vetting people as in selecting the, high, the highly qualified people who have the different properties of being a good col collaborator and open knowledgeable um, all the properties that we want but as we go through selecting people because I'm, I'm envisioning a process where we're selecting people and uh, as we talk approach people we're mm -hmm. actually recruiting them and 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 asking at the same time where they would fit in and starting right there it's like okay if you fit in this well what's your suggestion right there as an expert in terms of how can this be better so so as we're organizing the team we're already refining the uh, package that's in front of us yeah yeah and and so um what what i've got up right now uh I, I set up some questions that I think will help to steer that modularization process in the right direction. Um, also, a brief disclaimer that hey, you know these these aren't meant to be like law. This is not about shelf. Um, and if mm -hmm. if they're ill-fitting, they shouldn't be used. If better questions are identified, you know, add to or replace as necessary. But then, um, so I think the first primary question that needs to be answered is uh, what are the subunits of the total product, in this case the house, uh, that can be broken down in such a way uh, that each maintain a specific and independent function. Um, and so, you know, with, with the house, I mean, we might be talking about uh, electrical system, uh, probably talking about structure, uh, insulation, uh, you know, all, all these different things. And then, yep. um, next question is, you know, does, does the open source ecology global village construction set 
have a design that will interface with this product or module of the product in the product ecology map. Uh, I think this is an important question uh, because that will that will help us uh, to get down into some of the interfacing aspects of it, where you know we're we're saying, yeah. okay, you know, so we've got you know some some kind of uh, way to maintain pressure on on any uh, running water or cistern or, or something like that that would be associated with the house, and so you know. What, what else uh, does that plug into? What kind of port does it use? What kind of piping, yep. threading, et cetera, et cetera. And, and so that way we can start to constrain some of those um, boundary interface items. And then um, by constraining yeah. those boundary interface items, we essentially hand off a black box to the design teams on, on the day of the event. Um, and, yeah. and that's, and that's kind of how how these questions uh, go. I'm, I'm sure that there's a lot more uh, that could could be added here. And you know, I, I think um, yeah. But so that's a start I've got so far. One one of the other things um, that has come into mind that I think is really important is the idea of developing metric to collect on on the day of the event. And, and maybe even in the planning phases. And so the idea there is that we, we, mm -hmm. we try and develop some simple um, ways to measure how successful the event is and areas where it may have gone right and areas okay. where it may have gone wrong. So, so that way, as we iterate in the future, um, we, we, we you know, try to do that optimization in, in onto the areas that are really working for us. Uh, so what would you see as a, as a sample metric? Like, I mean, so, I mean, you know, we, we could uh, look at something like number of modules uh, successfully produced. Uh, we could look at like, okay, we, you know, in this, in this pre-planning workshopping phase, we came up with our ideal team uh, makeups for each of these module sets. And then on the day of the event, uh, you know, we had eight teams that were working on this module that had the ideal team makeup versus, you know, four teams that had a partial or, you know, maybe uh -huh. you could call suboptimal uh, makeup. And how do those two compare? Th things along yeah. those lines. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. So we can ca definitely count number of people that showed up and a composition of teams. Like, we need 50 teams. We got, like five or we got 50 teams that worked yeah. effectively or we wanted 2,000 people we got 300 people uh, <laughs> whatever those yeah. might be yeah yeah if we just define clear definitions of done for like we can spec out here's the mo different modules here's definitions of done some of the requirements I mean that's enough to create a metric we're saying here's the requirements and maybe you break the requirement, say, you know, 12 requirements per module. We just go through check. Okay, at the end of the event, which requirements are we checking off? So I think the more clear we are about the end state, that's why I think like the initial discussion with all the people that we're getting on board is important because we can, we can help get help on formulating those questions. And then we get really specific. It's like, bam, we have a huge task list. And then through the event, we just check them off one by one. As long as they are rather specific and coherent in the package. So, yep. I mean, I'm more optimistic than ever. This, I mean, this, I think with the modular breakdown, this could be, a, this could be a hit. Yeah, absolutely. And so, I mean, you know, I think that, the, the real key things to get nailed down in, in a modular breakdown is is actually kind of uh, mapping out where all the boundaries are in the system. So that way, you know, for each module, we know how much space it takes up, um, what inputs it's going to receive and in one, what format or language, and then what outputs it's going to produce and where those outputs are going. 
and then we leave the rest of, of that design uh, to the team, only specifying you know critical uh, things that relate to those uh, critical interfaces. Where it's like, yeah. you know, if we're talking about a motor shaft, we might say the motor shaft must be at least uh, at this long with yeah. a tolerance of you know plus or minus a quarter inch, or you know, and and, yeah. and then let people go so that way we come out with a bunch of designs that should hopefully be like you know completely interchangeable and yeah 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 okay so key would be in the modular breakdown we get we end up with a redundancy of solutions yes okay yep. maybe that's one of our metrics as well um. and and so um I, I did get kind of a, a goal here or trying to trying to sum up all of the texts above the um, the goal of the pre-planning event with the subject matter experts would be producing documentation that describes requirements and constrains critical interfaces for each module to be developed in the extreme enterprise event mm -hmm. direct mm -hmm. technical skill sets necessary for dev team success for each module yeah fully how modules will interface, uh, for example, inputs and outputs, connectors, signal, language type, and all known spatial constraints. Yeah. Uh, and so where, and that's that's kind of where I've gotten to on this. I yeah. think the next thing I'm going to try and get after is going to be with the swarming strategies and figuring out um, figuring out how those uh, will will break down? I mean, there's there's a lot of good good techniques in agile. Um, mm. Although, you know, the the scaled agile framework is is, is something that uh, it's kind of a, a kind of almost a, a culture that you need to 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 learn and adapt to, and so. Mm. Um, Yeah. So, so, I mean, yeah, you know, I'm I'm kind of trying to think through it in my head where it's like we have, we have a lot of people showing up. You know, we have these groups of eight to twelve uh, individuals, and you know they've they've got their skill sets, and so coming up with uh, ways that will help them effectively plan and break out tasks, so that way each individual on that team. Um, has an idea of how much effort each you know each task is going to take and is able to actually say you know okay I will be responsible for this task uh, for the module my team is going after and I expect that this task will take me uh, six hours to you know to get a, a working prototype out of so something like that and so that way they can kind of bid out their 24 hours that they'll have Mm -hmm. uh, per person, um, and then uh, maybe have like breakpoints where people are, are checking in, saying, "Hey, this is going well," or you know, "I'm ahead of schedule, so maybe I can jump off onto another task," or you know, other other things like that. But I'm I, I'm I'm trying to work out the. Uh, the ways that that will translate or you know how how we kind of boil that down yeah. into a regimen that, that that we can then hand off to 50 teams of 8 to 12 and have them like understand what we're talking about and and go after it or if that's even necessary well um i mean keeping it trying to keep it simple like we can uh, potentially in the pre prep phase we're talking to all these people we're we're kind of architecting that up front let's like i use the term agile waterfall like we're really heavyweight product managing it but then once we let it go it just goes right so maybe yeah. like we say okay what i what i envision is this it's like we've got a map here's a kind of a graphical indexical environment just a hyperlink document on the wiki and click on everything 
and you can get to the individual modules. It might look like a house, it might be like an infographic-like thing. And then people go into the modules. Um, they could use that to organize. But then there's also some basic infrastructure that I want to talk about, and that is some tools like there's work logs, which I was going to actually ask you. So take a look at, did I tell you about the work log yet? I, I believe so. I believe you gave me a link on uh, my Google Drive to the like Kanban uh, boards and, and this yeah. sort of thing. Well, David Log should be your log. I have Martin Log on the wiki. So take a look at click on uh, what I put in. Uh, um, so Tuesday, July. 14 is it today yeah okay so let's talk a little bit about how we can envision the because this is about combating uh, <laughs> you know Brooks law right yeah, yeah. okay we got to wor work out Brooks law and that is coordination so how do we coordinate everybody so uh, before what I envision is like in an hour crash course we can get everybody on board but what is that let's start with you uh, work log so if you we will have a a graphic of all the teams and you can click on everybody's page and you and uh, using a scalable platform like a wiki just you can just click on okay david log or marching log and you can see what people are contributing so you have to upload files or whatever assets you have to your log so everybody knows immediately where everybody's stuff is that's a big deal and then beyond that there's going to be usage of I don't know how we work out this this free cat thing because because probably most people a lot of people are not going to know free cat but they might be using other software that you can ac export into step files if it's cat designs uh, i mean we are going to encourage by all means that okay it's all open source tool chain degeneracy so you're all using the same tools uh but we'll, we'll see how many people we can find that are open i mean ideally we're searching through all the open source channels that a lot of the people are familiar with the critical tools like FreeCAD and KeyCAD or, or whatever else we got or OpenSCAD or anything else in wikis. Um, but as long as we have, uh, yeah, so we've got an infographic of all the modules. You have um, kind of like a team organizing page. Now, as we go forward, like, how do we manage the Scrum, what would you call it, the Scrum Master? like? Or let's see what what role would you see yourself doing? Maybe like you can what we can have you do is organize, help help everybody kind of manage that everybody's doing documentation. Like um, we've got all the teams. Maybe make sure coordinate between all of them that everybody's. Um, I think the biggest thing is logging, logging and uploading information as soon as it's available. Like as soon as you have any input. If it's on the wiki, you click save and it, everybody can see it already. If it's live mm -hmm. editable docs, people can see immediate changes real time. If it's free CAD or CAD files, we have a method of using part libraries where you just upload that. The wiki does have a version history, so you can do that pretty much in real time. But we just have to orient everybody that, okay, we're not, we don't have some master million dollar uh, collaboration platform. We're using common tools, we're using wikis. Uh, we're using a, a process where essentially everybody understands that everybody's working openly. You find people's content by their names on the logs and just basic, very, very basic protocol that you can understand in like an hour of study, you know, uh, for somebody who's new at it. So, so I think that part of the value proposition to participants is that you're going to learn something about a large scale collaboration and how that could work using very simple tools. That's definitely a, a value proposition as well as the other thing being that, well, here you're getting exposed to all these other people that are producing, like we've got this roster of these amazing people. That, that's what I think is going to bring people to the table. Like as we go along talking to new, new people, we're like the next, the more people we talk to, the more credible a case we have, like, oh, we already have 50 people committing to these and these are these people with these skills and so forth. Um, so it becomes more compelling the farther we go along, but uh, I think for me, like I'm gonna need to find some people to uh, help coordinate that process because that means a lot of talking on, and so I, I'll probably get involved in that. Like 
I don't know, at least half time or possibly full time. Because I think this is an, a very important experiment to try out. This is like, like the future of human economic history could be. <laughs> yeah. We could be creating it here. Um, if, if it's successful, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, it would be. It, it would be an option outside of the global supply chain or you know massive uh, mm -hmm. institution. The yeah. You, the majority of your life too in order for uh, well-being yeah yeah basically we're the the grand claim is instead of a highly coordinated effort happening in a corporate setting we're saying here's a wild agile process that gets results even faster be, and better because it's actually open and truly collaborative and that's the advantage we have we're saying we're unabashedly publishing everything that we generate here for everybody's benefit and that ethical motivation is a I think a key driver for how this can succeed and why a corporation may not be in a position to do this at all so that's um, I think that's a that's a good thing uh, so yeah I would say um, I'm gonna talk to I have a mentor who advises on on business and marketing strategy and all that but I'm gonna run by him like okay how do we get because I, I envision a little budget like if we talk about on one side is to coordinate everybody up front and I, I imagine I'll be doing a lot of that but also if it's during the event apparently we're gonna need a prototype or two or many so we might have to be ready with a decent budget um, for various component prototyping so yeah. I think that's something we have to have up front here come up with yeah and and so that's that's one of the things that I've been kind of thinking about too is as as we're reaching out to people it will be really important to know who has uh, either access or owns uh, fabrication equipment right exactly mm -hmm. because they're, they're going to be the the ones who are a critical resource when it when it comes to actually prototyping these things or you know uh, if it's a design that can come out of basically a hardware store then then that opens it up quite a lot but you still you still need tools in order to assemble yeah. that design if there's any sort of welding or any, yeah fabrication it would be an important thing to track as we're building yeah, absolutely. That's going to be a critical thing, and that's that's the part that, wow, that's formidable. But if we get buy-in here, then then we can be uh, go forward quite a bit. And if it's just some some funding, like say we enlist somebody who has a machine shop, well, they need to get paid for their materials or time or whatever. Uh, we we have to probably be ready for that if we're going to promise some results that that are here in a rapid time scale. Now I think the good thing about some housing things is that there are, I just was looking at open source housing, just ran into another one from from France, another design. We work on it, Wikihouse works on it, there's open structures, there's another project I know that's in, in, in um, Austria. So there is some, there's Wikihouse of course, um, so there is some effort in this and yeah it's I think calling out for a larger basically sol calling out for a larger solving a larger problem is a lot of the value that we're offering by saying hey we're just going to collaborate like nobody has collaborated before yeah yeah so let's see um what do you see like during the event so say uh you're collaborating for do you think we can find a weekend and this would be i mean this is a few months down the road i mean not six months to a year i'd say um but um, as far as Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I mean, it would have to be probably something like that. We would ask people to show up Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, what What do you think uh, would be a feasibility for you? Yeah. So I mean, it would be it would be possible if I started like Friday evening and then Saturday and then Sunday would. Mm. That, that would probably be how, how that breakdown would work for me. Although, you know, I mean, part part of the advantage here uh, with a lot of the networking technologies and, and if we can actually do any any kind of um, 
swarming in in CAD models or you know other uh, design yeah. computer aided design, um, then you know part of part of the advantage may be that people can work asynchronously, and and so. Um, yeah, although if, if I'm filling into a, a kind of uh, mm -hmm. a, a release train engineer or something where it's like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to uh, enable and, and help out uh, the, the backing efforts over multiple teams, then, then I'm going to be on the line and accessible and, you know, when, when they're working. I think the so, coordination we could use from, um, w would that be like a scrum master role? Or one of most so like the, the scrum master would typically be integrated with the team. Okay, with and, the team. And so like, you know, the, the, the development staff on, on the team um, will have their sprint and the scrum master will, will kind of know what needs to be done in, in this iteration or in this sprint, and they will know who's working on which tasks when interdependent with one another, that is, you know, um, to, to two tasks depend on each other for their steps and have to be completed, this one can be, yeah. and the one master will, um, Good times. Um, um, uh, are you can, muted? Can, can you hear me now? I can hear you. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but so the the scrum master would have a a really uh, micro view of the development process as a uh, single team is going through a sprint iteration, um, and then when you have larger organizations, the way it it usually works is that you might have like a scrum of scrums. Or you'll have someone like a, a release train engineer um, that is is helping to integrate the effort across multiple scrum teams. And so the way I'm looking at this with respect to the extreme enterprise event would be like each team uh, going after a, a single module that would be like a scrum team. And and so you might, I mean, it it would be good to have someone in there who who is. Uh, familiar with it, the, that kind of um, organizational management and, and, and that sort of thing that would be able to help make sure that the tasks are, are proceeding as expected or if there are things that are causing issues, um, they'll be able to go in and, and do their best to get those things out of the way. What do you, um, so spe more specifically speaking, what do you see like, what would you see your role in a in this event? Um, I've got a decent understanding with uh, all works at software proprietor. Um, so I have a You're cutting out, man. Maybe, maybe cut out, cut out your video. I'm having a hard time hearing you. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. You're cutting out. So maybe uh, maybe turn off your video. I think you, your vi your uh, internet sounds like it's a little weak. Okay. Let me do that. All right. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. So I was asking, right. trying to ask you about what specific role do you see yourself playing in uh, in um, 24 hours? So um, I I could I could see myself uh, working with. 
brand models. I could see myself um, working with a basic electronics thing. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, you keep cutting out, uh, but yeah, go ahead. Um, so, uh, as, as far as uh, technical capacity, I think either one of those two fields. So uh, you said there's one is, sorry, you, I heard one is CAD. What's the other one? Yeah. Um, uh, electronic circuits. Um, Tell uh, me a little more, uh, what kind of electronic circuits? Um... So I mean I'm I, I'm familiar with you know wiring and and the basics of of you know circuit analysis from from the perspective of Ohm's law and and all all that kind of stuff. I mean, do you I'll, use things any software like KiCad or? Um, I've used P Spice before. P Spice. And, yep. Which is OrCAD, yeah. Is P Spice open source? Because there's the. So they're they're freeware, but I don't I do not believe that they're open source. There's ORCAD proprietary. Okay, okay. yeah. There's uh, okay, okay. So some circuit analysis. Yep. Um. Yeah, I mean, the there is, I, I would like to add on the swarming on CAD, yeah, we can definitely do that. There's a way, using part libraries and maybe, um, I'm taking notes here so you can take a look at that, but, but look at um, uh, FreeCAD, oh yeah, 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 FreeCAD workflow, FreeCAD tutorial, FreeCAD 101. There's a page on the wiki about how we do that workflow where using part libraries you can upload individual parts by breakdown into the wiki and then let me find a specific page here so um, basic work um, no that's feature and feature. Let's see. Let's see what the part libraries page says. Oh yeah, did you see the page called OSC Collaboration Protocol? That's a that's a decent start. Okay. There's a page. There's a link. Okay, so I'm gonna link to that in the notes. But let me paste that into the chat box. What I probably need to do is do like a, this is going to be my chance to do this like one hour crash course on how do you do large scale collaborative development really refined for okay we're getting strangers who don't have a lot of time to get onboarded but well, here's the core um, but if you take a look at the link in the chat box there's a part library link in that document and part libraries are where you can break anything down like you know take the house you can create a library of parts that are down to as small a part as you like and each individual person can take a file from the part library without getting into any editing conflicts because you simply have divided it already and you're working on individual parts that's the kind of workflow that you can simulate that's that's scalable that uses the wiki and FreeCAD uh, that's kind of the general idea does that make any sense that we basically are breaking up with visual representations 
we're breaking down the thing into many parts, as many as we like, and therefore you can get as many people as you like working on a on a CAD design without interference, without locking down parts or anything like that. So it's uh, been doing that kind of process, and it works. I think works really well because um, you're able to simply do collaborative design that way. Are you still there? Uh, David, I can't hear you if you're speaking. Yeah, can you hear me? David, can you hear me? Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. Sorry. Yep. Sorry about that. Take I did. It. I did try closing out uh, you, YouTube and and uh, Gmail because I know those tend to eat up some bandwidth. Yep. Uh, so and the other thing. So I sent a link to your to David Log. Well, I didn't send a link. Go to David Log. On it, I yep. have a link to our notes from today. There's a time graph. So I will um, make that part of the protocol, like each person adds to their time graph, which is basically logging hours. I was going to ask you that, would you mind just doing that so you type in, like, with respect to this project, how much time you're spending. So anytime you do something, just keep counting, and it feeds into the main uh, hours graph that's on my log and elsewhere. Absolutely. Can you yeah. do that? That would be great. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Because that way we're going to see a nice large spike for the <laughs> around the event, which will be great. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do take a look at you haven't seen the collabor OSC collaboration protocol page. Um, uh, I've I've got that up and I will yeah definitely look at that. But probably for me, like what, a couple of assets I need to generate is a good one hour crash course and okay bam this is how you get involved and which will be relevant to all the participants in such an event and I think I can do that in an hour like what you really got to do is really understand the concept of how the tools exist now we can do it including the cl cloud collaborative large-scale CAD mm -hmm. doable all doable breakdown interface designs same concepts but yeah it's it's good uh, so I'll, I'll do a video on that and then just start looking for next task is start looking for candidates I have a um, where I'm gonna look for candidates there's a page called uh, OSC marketing that's really this is like marketing because we gotta find all these people so I have a ton of different links at the OSC marketing page including various communities open communities like fab labs hackerspaces open source hardware journals other ones. There's a good one under communities of interest. I'm going to put that at the top. Um, um, but that's where I would search for the actual participants. There's a gold mine in some of the directories there. Uh, the one that I'm somewhat excited about is there's a there are open source hardware journals and we can probably find a lot of people there there's other open project databases so 
I'm going to add that to your log so you can take a look at that. But that's where I would go to find people and bust out, keep developing the Rolodex of people that are working in the open space. Um, yeah, I think on me, on me the onus is to kind of like start the initial breakdown and start talking to people. And yeah. Keep everybody. Start getting people on board. And and so I mean I definitely, I definitely think like getting the modular uh, breakdown. Yeah. Like getting that done as soon yeah. as possible uh, would be really really great because then that something yeah. to put in front of people where you have these kind of bite sized chunks where it's saying you know hey we we want to see how many great designs you all uh, can come up with and here's here's the different modules you know what do you you know what do you think mm -hmm. um, and, yeah. and using that as kind of a, a recruiting tool yeah yeah agreed I'll try to generate that as soon as I can here um, yeah and I mean you know if I can if I can help out in, in that process as well, then I'm definitely on board. Yep, I'll send you a link to, um, there's some modular breakdown we've already done with the Open Building Institute CD Go Home. Um, there's a CD Go Home index where we kept track of all the utilities. So I put that also on the meeting notes for today so you can take a look at that uh, but it's taking that and maybe yeah organizing that starting with that and like reframing it for do you do any graphics or anything like any uh, drawing diagrams diagrams you must do diagrams <laughs> <laughs> um, so I mean what do we like, need like, like technical diagrams, yes. Uh, my 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 fiance is a is a graphic designer, and um, she's she she's quite good uh, with 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 graphics and and typesetting, and understands uh, a lot of the human factors elements of um, media and and being able to uh, make it very readable and uh, mm. understandable. Mm. Think she can help out? Um, I, I I think she would. Yeah. Um, it's just knowing uh, knowing knowing what to ask for. I guess would be the thing. Okay. Well, as we're going along doing um, the breakdown. Whoops. I'd say, can you hear me? I can hear you. Yep. As we're going along doing the breakdown, uh, the graphics artists, communicators come in, take what we're generating and, and start communicating it properly to people, right? So infographics or copy around that that we're using. Uh, I think what I can do is, that's some of the roles that are critical to this whole process. It's like the people who are because in the enterprise you're developing marketing copy as well so there's a bunch of roles around that but I can I mean on one side it's the design of the house but then there's the modular breakdown of all the enterprise elements and just a much greater picture of what a business <coughs> looks like so um, maybe if you have some um, because this gets into a question of okay because people are going to be like okay what can she do well uh, it's almost we have to start by communicating what those what all those roles are i think prop that's that's part of the breakdown so i think as as we start doing that that's going to become more self-evident of what what the specific tasks tasks are because i think a lot of people um I think a lot of people don't think in a, such a holistic concept of the system's design, so you have to pretty much inform them, communicate that, and they can go from there. 
Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Exactly. Yep. 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 And, and I mean, I you know, I think um, I think on the technical side, like the 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 best way to get that while leaving the design possibilities still open is is just getting at those critical interfaces and and people who are who understand each module well enough to be able to describe those and then uh, set you know what those constraints and parameters are so that way we can hand it off um, to to a team and they say okay yeah I'm gonna you know I'm uh, I'm gonna build two and I know that uh, on on my output I need this this baud rate or that you know the, these sorts of things. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and so, yeah, I think, I mean, the, the next thing that I'd had in mind that I was going to try and uh, develop out for the, um, the event planning side of things was, uh, trying, trying to get after, uh, self-organizing teams and, mm -hmm idea that you know so maybe maybe having some some kind of event where um people actually choose the the team that they're they're going into so it's like we've got the technical background or skill set of people already and then you know some some other information maybe about uh how how they prefer to communicate or you know how how they tend to interact with people on a, a technical project and then kind of let people associate together um basically like what what i've read from what i understand in the uh, agile scrum communities is that uh allowing allowing that to happen um gets better results partially because people feel um like they've got more almost a personal ownership mm -hmm. over o over the product uh project but then also um some sometimes people really know who they can work well with uh, based on certain types of information and so trying to develop out mm -hmm. uh methods of allowing uh, enabling people to do that um i think could be another kind of swarming technique style uh thing but uh, that i'm trying to get mm -hmm. after but uh so you're saying how do you facilitate how do you have people select teams or tasks is that what you're saying yeah so i mean uh i guess the vision that it, that i have in my mind right now is like coming into the day of the extreme enterprise event you know we've got uh, 600 people uh, and and we've got some idea of where each of their technical background is and we, then we've also got these modules built out and so on the day of the event um, I, I'm playing with the idea of rather than say assigning people into teams, um, letting yeah. people self-assign in into teams, um, and then including including again some kind of metrics. Where it's like people with uh, we we get a statement from people about um, what kind of uh, uh, collaborator or you know what what kind of uh, team members they prefer or you know maybe even just you know some some personal blurb about what uh, I don't know what music they like or, or something and so that and, and and then with that each person will kind of select into a, a, a team of people they feel like they'd like to work with yeah but this is remoted this time probably Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Um, we can have we can have a thing where here's a here's what we came up before, and then the, during the event, well, maybe those people, some people, there's some adjustments. Some people don't show up. Maybe new people show up, or there's some surprises, and we can allow that to happen. Like just because we were selected for a certain team, maybe somebody wants to go elsewhere or something, which is fine. Um, mm -hmm. 
as long as everybody has awareness of what tasks are being covered and not yeah so that transparency yep. is good. But I think a lot that can be done with a bunch of uh, nicely formatted uh, live editable docs um, for various parts yeah see what we can do okay So take it from here then. Um, I'll work on the breakdown. Start start on the breakdown uh, very explicitly and go from there. And, and you've got um, what are your your next steps? Um, my my next steps um is that I. I'm, I've been focusing on the uh, XE planning page and and trying to iteratively build build through these things. Um, so I'm I'm down to uh, where we're talking about swarming techniques and and things like that. And so I wanted to get some information in there about uh, mm -hmm. self-organizing teams and and uh, these these kinds of strategies that are used uh, pretty yeah. predominantly in the agile Scrum communities and and also some strategies to help uh, people do that on on the day of and oh, I've got I've got a word document that I've been using kind of as my guide here that I need to need to get pulled up but I mean basically just trying to build out um, that pre-planning event page and then yeah if um, you know if if you're ready to try and uh, do the the modular uh, breakdown of the the micro house, then and, and you feel like I could be a good fit to help in that process, um, I'd definitely be on board for for doing you know for collaborating on something like that too. Yeah, sounds good. I'll include you as much as I can. So. By the way, Martian, mm -hmm. I've, I've always I've always been kind of curious yeah. um, with, uh, with with like the uh, factory e farm. Mm -hmm. um, you've been you've been kind of living there for a number of years now, right? Yeah, since two thousand six. Um, yep, that's what I thought. So, how much um, how much money e each month like does it end up? Uh, requiring for like outside sources or you know like whatever whatever uh, uh bills still wind up coming through uh b bills for overhead are about 1100 a month okay that's if we don't maintain the roads or do, don't do anything just electricity internet base just basic stuff yep yeah interesting yeah no i've always i've always been kind of curious because I guess as I've been like following um, open source e ecology my my kind of mental c conception of, of when uh, OC has has truly like won or is able to plant their flag on the hill is is when um, basically it's it's gotten to a point where individuals are able to come in and achieve a, a standard of living greater than what they would be able to achieve at a, a minimum wage job full time, basically, you know, without without necessarily needing any external like incomes and and these sorts of things, um, because then you actually have a really large pool of people who would, you know, uh, truly benefit from going into uh, a more homesteader style uh, arrangement using open source ecology but yeah well that's i mean that's only for the stalwarts i would say but i mean the model of change is um more about so, so just just a little overview here 2028 is our deadline for finishing all the gvcs yep and Absolutely. after that it's about developing the osc campuses worldwide so once the technology base is available for low-cost replication 
then we can talk about okay here's how we roll out to different locations and starting with making this place fully functional right now it's like minimal there's nobody uh, we, it's seasonal right now there's myself and Katarina they're here full-time so it's not we don't have like a big operation so first it's of course showing that this is a fully viable facility uh, with permanent people that are besides ourselves because right now we're doing things like the summer of extreme design build you want to turn on your video i think maybe you're in did your internet improve any i think so okay um, so yeah. yeah um it's to start building up the program so it's i mean you know the deal about a volunteer project has got huge turnover so we we yeah. haven't had stable stable people the discovery there that's the exact reason why we're doing the extreme enterprise we have to take it to that level where people can actually make a living out of this and and that's what we're really hitting hard right now after a decade of prototyping we're saying okay these are all the enterprises that are ready to to roll uh house being i mean with the cd eco home uh have you seen that yes yeah i mean yeah. with that i mean it's an amazing thing with the brick press the 3d printers i mean all these things that are are near finish line which is just plain amazing but it requires that last step so what we're going about it first of all is we're getting the 3d printer business model as a fully replicable business model that we can t teach people here's how you make 10k a month doing this um, so this is the distributive enterprise concept we teach how you get into enterprise and then the other thing is the main thrust i think right now that we might really take which we are starting is actually osc chapters people who we train it's a one or two year immersion and mm -hmm. then you replicate an OSC chapter by doing what we already do, which is we do 3D printers as a product. We do workshops of various sorts around steam camps or other things. But OK, use that as the base where you work. You essentially work. So starting to believe in that or practice the post scarcity thing, we're working essentially like a week out of the month. So revenue generating activities like a week out of the month and the rest is further R&D until 2028. And then like 25% flex time, which you do like stuff where it's most relevant to what you think is best for open source ecology. That's the pro that's the program for the, the immersion program uh, where you come out of it with your micro factory that you're capable of producing 3D printers, knowing how to build them, source them to teach FreeCAD and uh, basics of electronics and other things. So that's that's the basic program for chapter replication right now. So we have that starting right now. You've got a candidate from South Africa who's highly interested. You can look at the video, Lesejo from um, South Africa, pretty entrepreneurial guy. Um, but yeah, people who see the vision, it's like, wow, this can empower community. So he's really high on that kind yeah. of vision. We're, we're going to build our community from the ground up. They got wealth of minerals like chromium and, and platinum group metals there that he's actually, he did a mining operation there actually, interestingly. <laughs> that it's it's people who are talking that kind of language where it's like hey we got resources here uh we want to put them to use we don't want to be sucked by the multinationals and and remote power centers uh we're gonna yeah. basically distribute uh, basically a more equitable economic system so but that that's starting with the the notion of the oc chapters and i think that's something i can provide right now like we're we're doing this for a decade now uh, we yeah. know how to do certain things so we can start replicating that but but what we're trying to address is people doing this for a livelihood you know that's the yeah. that's the deal exactly. mm -hmm. yeah yep um, and then, i mean that that was that was always a major inspiration like because i i'd gone to the youtube uh I, I heard of osc on the youtube link that i posted in the chat and then I, I went and looked at the uh, TED talk that you'd given, and then um, I just kind of started following on on from there. And, and yeah, I, um, I, I think the can you the biggest that thing. Link? Can I, I can't. It doesn't let me click yeah. on it, nor copy it for some reason. Um, so. Wonder. I don't know. There's some weird stuff happening where. Why am I not able to click on it? I still can't copy or click on it. Um, Let me see. 
Oh, I'm gonna retype it and then U W. Yeah. I mean, H. Is that somebody else's video? Yeah, and it, I mean, I think that's the only real video of, of that person I'd ever really watched. It was just the, you know, I think that they talked about like open source ecology I'm and then they you know, because Venus Project. But, um, you know, it was like when I went and looked at Venus Project, there was a lot of vision, but not a lot of how to, to achieve that. You know, like, like you know, the, the, the founder there was talking about like, Oh well, every city will have a, a factory, and everything's run by AI. But no, no actual roadmap oh, yeah, to get yeah, yeah, there. Yes. But with like the global yeah. village construction set, I mean that that is a, a very real flesh to bone kind of thing. Where it's like, you no, know, if you have all of these things, you can have a an industrial economy. Exactly. You know, in um. in in. Um, I'm still trying to pull up that video. Is that Z two one seven or is that an L L in there? Looks like L seven. Uh, let me see here. Let me um, let me try pasting that into a a word document and then seeing if that'll Send recognize me an it. Send email. Well. Yeah. I want to see which one. That's is. good. No, I mean you're absolutely right. I mean the. Venus Project, it's communism with robots, it's futurism, it's, uh, I, I think, you know, we haven't gotten traction yet, but I think we're on a way to get there, but we're talking about substance, and we're producing substance, so, um, and then some people actually, you might have noticed, I don't know if you noticed, but we got it a lot into the 3D printers, but that's because they're very fundamental, because we're building parts for the torch table, we want to do things like, with a 3D printer, with the 3D printer, we're building things like the shredder, or um, the important thing is printing like up to the house panels later on, like modular house panels with larger printers, or rubber tracks for the tractors. So there's a huge realm of use for the 3D printer. And since all, I mean, plastic is like one third of the economy, and the 3D printing is well established open source technology, it just makes sense to go with that as a first robust economic model because that's a huge, huge industry there. Um, so that's why we're doing that. So people are like, well, why are you doing like that instead of like the big tractors? Well, th we're getting there. We're, we're working on it. Those are all there. You can pick them up and build them if you want, but otherwise we'll productize them as soon as we can kind of deal. And, yeah. And and I mean, you know, three, 3D printer is something that is useful to, to most people. I mean, you know, I've got... I've got mine, mine back here. <laughs> yeah, know, I, saw, uh, I, saw, I saw that. Uh, did and, you try posting that in a, in an email or? Yeah, let me, let me pull up my my email again because I have. Welcome to Effective C++ Winner. This is Colby Kirk. Oh, Colby this Kirk. I've never heard of it. Intro to open source. That's, that's, that's who you're talking about? Yeah. I mean, like I said, I was just kind of exploring around. Um, oh. Looking for a lot of different viewpoints and trying to suss out what makes sense to me. And that, that was what originally got me on to open source ecology. Very cool. Well, because actually, I'm trying to actually get on a bunch of different podcasts right now because I'm finding that's that could be a really good, good place to find people like people who are topic aligned. Yeah, there's like for example, this guy. I'd like to see if he wants to do a podcast for real or um, live podcast or some post scarcely that. Um, not. I mean, well, like, it's not. It's, yeah, this guy has not been around. Just a small channel. That's yep. new, like a, four years ago. No, just two videos four years yeah. ago. So I guess this guy didn't take off very right. much. But um, so you heard about? So he mentions I've never heard of this. This so. is Colby Kirk. Huh. 
postscarcity.net intro to open source. So what do you say about us? Uh, any interesting stuff or just mentioning? Um, yeah, just just mentioning the uh, open source ecology mm -hmm. would be a, a pathway towards a more post-scarcity style economy. Yeah. And, you know, um, yeah. but I do, I do think um, there, there might be some avenues uh, also on some some of the like political channels and, and things like that mm -hmm. that are out there because they're often you know doing uh, interviews of people and sometimes what they're looking at doesn't have to be inherently political it just has to be speaking to needs of, of a society or, or you know audience group that that they're paying attention to and trying to speak to um, I know I know there's uh, one uh, group called Status Quo, yeah. um, and I mean they, you know, they they mainly uh, do like <laughs> in and in journalism, and, and they're covering uh, the protests, and they're covering um, they they're they're doing a a, a tour that's called um, uh, not not America the farewell tour. That's uh, Chris Hedges thing, but. Um, uh, so something along the lines of like the controlled demolition of the middle class is is a yeah. docu series that they're that they're working on. Um, but you know they they travel around. I think they're on tour right now. So if they're if they are headed out to Missouri, I mean that that could be an an opportunity to actually say, hey, you know this is this is the and, and here's here's the pitch. Um, and I know I know they've got a pretty regular audience of, of a couple thousand people, um, and so yeah, we maybe... yeah we definitely want to yeah we, I'm up for all kinds of things uh, regarding on site, not really media ready right now. I mean our place doesn't look great. The thing is like people don't understand like when we build something like we take it apart and use it for the next machine. So we don't have a lot of stuff lying around that's really picturesque. Uh, outside of maybe yep. the CD go home and maybe the tractor and some other things but um, now we're trying to keep it that way um, for publicity reasons for PR reasons but we are definitely gonna get this place looking really good like in a couple of years so that will be media ready in the future but not yet I'd definitely be quite interested in uh, appearing on all these things because uh, I think a lot of times we speak only to our audience which is primarily the open source linux all that kind of stuff we really need to reach out to all these other things because the truth is i mean we can entertain so many different audiences so mm. i'm definitely up for that yeah yeah no there's i mean there's I, I i think i think there's a lot of different uh groups that that would find resonance with uh with the OSD message so yes yeah, send me uh, send me some links or intros to if you know any of these people there's a page called OSD related podcast we're actually doing an active search for podcasts yeah. to appear on uh, I'll put that in your in the notes on your uh, David yeah, Hammer log. yeah. the uh, 360 consulting yeah starting yeah. Yeah, that's they. That's the outcome of some of their their suggestions. Um, did you find your log, David log? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I've got that. So there's a link. All these things I mentioned, uh, they're linked uh, at the discussion notes there. But yeah, definitely, definitely uh, want to reach out to bunch of people like really trying to find you know the thing like with extreme enterprise and other things like find me the first ever authentic distributive enterprise besides ourselves I really don't know of anyone right. um, but I think a lot of that's gonna become pretty common in a few years like I think with the ex extreme enterprise event and some of the other stuff we're doing like once we get the business on the 3d printer that's we're showing hey we're making money and people are actually getting jobs we're going to start creating noise right now it's still the dark ages but i think they're the dark ages are pretty soon to end yeah yeah and 
Yeah, I mean, other uh, other things that I, I find like similar was um, so there's uh, Donella Meadows, who's like yeah. a well, very old school. Okay, and yeah. and so she she'd end up setting up like a sustainable community out in in New Hampshire, and so you know, I mean, those those communities tend to be fairly well off, like retirees oh, wow. and 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 you know people like that but i do think that the open source ecology model could also uh resonate there and absolutely you know and and, and I, building those like communities that are uh wanting actively wanting to move towards uh more self-sufficiency or community local community sufficiency is uh, would be major yeah uh, milestone yeah i mean eco villages collapsitarians <laughs> lip tarts rep tarts <laughs> everyone loves yeah. it <laughs> no we're 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 a political yeah. a secular organization with a broad offer for many uh, i mean it it, it it makes sense though because yeah. as soon as you start affiliating uh politically then you get so 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 many agendas yeah, and yeah. These, these agendas are just so eclectic that it, it's like they'll go off in, in whatever uh, direction is most convenient with the political winds of the day and I don't think you can have that in order to get to where we want to go yeah no we need uh, yeah. a little bit of collaboration but yeah it's fascinating like just the insights about collaboration that we do, we do not collaborate and like, economically no, it's such an interesting era. I hope, like, in a few hundred years, we're, like, looking back at this as just like we're looking at the Dark Ages today, 500 years ago. It's like, holy cow, what was up with these people that they couldn't collaborate or, you know, just people were so marginalized or um, just backwards. <laughs> I think this is backwards what yeah. we live in. People say that we have high innovation, but I don't think it's... Uh, we could really unleash innovation and access uh, way over what it is today. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, I'm optimistic and zealous about it, but yeah, we're just uh, uh, not there yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we're 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 working towards it. Yeah, we're we're definitely on on a good track. So we'll keep going at it. Yep. All right, man. Well, so that was good. Um, yeah, if you have any specific suggestions or introductions to some of these podcasts, I'm mean, sure you listen to various circles like that introduce us recommend us and stuff like that definitely love to be on we'll yeah. yeah yeah all right Thanks. um yeah any anything else i think that's it that's it for now let's do it and um i'll work on the breakdown as soon as i get a chance and continue pushing this forward that i mean definitely there's i think a lot of energy behind this concept so um we'll uh make it happen absolutely yeah. okay all right all david right. well thanks so much and yeah we'll keep in touch take care margin good to yeah. see you okay thanks bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.